We are super excited to share this video with you. We're going to be talking about communion. What communion is, how to partake in communion, and looking at some common misconceptions about communion. And why you should definitely take it serious because you you gonna die if you don't. Yeah. Yeah. People are teaching that the wine that's in your glass literally transform into blood and you're drinking blood. No, 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 no. Hey, how's it going, Gather viewers? Welcome to another episode of Gather Talk. We are super excited to share this video with you. We're going to be talking about communion. Uh, the past couple weeks, we've been having a great series in uh, discipleship training. So we've gotten a lot of questions around communion. So we've decided let's bring it to Gather Talks so we can share this information with everyone who loves to partake um, in our video. So we're going to be looking at what communion is, how to partake in communion, and looking at some common misconceptions about communion. So I'm going to just actually dive into scripture and we're going to look at Jesus and the apostles partaking in communion. So everybody's going to turn to Matthew 26 and I'm going to read verses 26 through 28 and that's going to be in the King James Version. It says, and as they were eating, being Jesus and the 12 disciples, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take eat this is my body and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink ye all of it for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many for remission of sins so this is what communion is it's the eating of the bread and partaking it in this case is the wine which is represents the blood of jesus christ so everybody that does this partakes in communion and it's no, you know, mystery. Everybody understands that this is what communion is. But we need also need to know why we need to do it and things that surround, you know, more details around communion. Because you don't want to just do something because you see it, you read it, hey, I'm going to do it too. So let's figure out the why. So communion basically is what we're going to see in scripture as she just talked about. Basically, we're doing it as a memorial unto the sacrifice that Christ did for us as far as dying for our sins. We're going to see in scripture that his flesh is symbolic um, of that bread because it was his flesh that was broken for us that and wounded for us that we may have that healing, that we may have that deliverance, that, that saving um, from sins that we can experience through him. And as she stated, that blood is a representation of the wine that you drink is representation of the blood that he shed for us. Um, so we're going to go through a few scriptures before I make the, the, the comment about, you know, is the blood really, does the wine really turn into blood or not? Because I know that said a lot by Catholics and maybe some people from other backgrounds, but we really want to, I want to get into that because I think that that's something that's very important. So let's read a few more scriptures about what we call communion to get a better understanding of what's going on. So Nefertiria, what do you have? Yes. So first I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians 11 and 24. And that reads, and once again, we're going to have the version that we read from at the bottom. So it says, and when he gave thanks, he break it and take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. So like Tremiko just said, right. we do this in remembrance of him. Yes. It is a memorial that we partake in as often as we please per se to do this in remembrance of Jesus Christ for what he did on us at the cross. Yeah. And so spending just a little time there, communion is... Uh, Sacred is probably too strong of a word. Mm -hmm. Is I'm good? Okay, I just I don't know. No, it's sacred. You know how sometimes I'd be hyperbole. No, like, I want to make sure I'm in the right place. Right. Okay. Yeah. So sacred, because it yeah. is a memorial and mm -hmm. is for us to meditate and remember on Christ's sacrifice. Yeah. The fact that his body was broken and bruised and his blood was shed that we would have access to repentance from sin and remission from sin. Through his name, and his name is Jesus. Right. And the main reason, like, sacred is not such a 
you know, hyperbole is because this is what our religion is founded upon. Mm -hmm. This principal aspect that he came, he died, he manifested in flesh, he rose and repentance and remission is available in his name. That's what we're remembering. That's that's the sacrifice that was done. Yeah. And we're thinking about that and we're meditating on that. That's the whole basis of being a Christian. That's right. what the the gospel is in its totality. So when you take communion, you are remembering and recapping your foundation, your basis of following Christ. And we're going to get into this a little more in detail, but this is why you should not enter into community communion haphazardly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't understand the why behind it, right. you should not be partaking in it. Right. Because it has no con it has no connection for you. Yeah. Yeah. You're just doing it because yeah. you came to church that day with mama and auntie and today is the day they do communion exactly. and absolutely there's scripture that talks about that and i'll dive into that in just a second but the bible calls it unworthy and even you not having the knowledge of it or you live in a sinful lifestyle it's like we all just said um it's a memorial of jesus christ so how dare you take his brick bread and right. take the wine and you out here living a terrible yeah. right. lifestyle of right. sin. Because it's supposed to remind you of the fact that I don't have to live this lifestyle exactly. no more. <laughs> and just to cut in before she reads that, because I'm going to pick up where Nefertiria left off in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, because she stopped at verse 24. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read verse 25 through 26, which says, in the same way, also he took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes so you're seeing here with communion when we eat of that bread which represents his flesh when we drink of that cup which represents his blood of this new covenant that we entered into people. We are in a covenant with God. Yep. This is showing forth that covenant we have. And what we're doing is we're doing it as a memorial of the sacrifice that he made. But then it also says we're proclaiming his death until he comes. The fact that he died, that he rose and went back up to heaven and we're waiting for that second coming. So this is what you're doing when you participate in it, whether you believe in it or not. If you are taking communion, you are you are a participant yeah. in this proclamation. And that's why you shouldn't enter it haphazardly. Yeah. Because if you don't have knowledge, that ain't got nothing to do with you if you're not trying to be in that covenant. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel as though because taking communion has become more ceremonially traditional yeah. Yeah. than it has yeah. in the sense of we are doing this for a purpose. purpose. Exactly. Like it is not just for tradition. Yeah. That has been lost on so many people. Yeah. yeah. That there is monumental purpose behind us taking communion. That's why I love that you brought up that point because it's absolutely so important to understand why you're doing it. I know for me, like you said, that tradition I it's like the first of the year. It, it was the first of the year. I was just like, oh, this is what Let's we go. do. We take it's this day. And this is when I wasn't even like where I'm at now, but I was just like, oh, okay, it's time to do communion. So I'm just just taking it. And you know, we say, you know, our few words or whatnot, we have prayer, and then I went about went about my day. The same prayer, exactly. the same statement that we say every year. And the <laughs> church does not do a good job and actually does the kingdom a disservice when you do not explain why you do it and the reason why i said it is because there's so many new visitors yeah. you know you actually and i'm just thinking about it as we're like talking about this i'm like whoever's watching this now you have the understanding but just think about those who go to a church just to visit during the day of communion they just like oh okay we supposed to do communion but why yeah. Like, it's just like, why? Nope, we just gonna do this prayer. We're gonna speak to us for a second. We're gonna do the same prayer. And then we go about our day living in sin, living in unrighteousness, and call it a day. And for me, I would take offense mm -hmm. because of what this means. Like, we are, we are celebrating and remembering our Savior. Mm -hmm. If you are a visitor or a guest, this is what you are participating in. If that is not what you believe, if that is not what 
your lifestyle is, we uh, ask that you yeah. do not participate. Exactly. Period. Exactly. <laughs> and my thing with the the communion being so, this is a new relationship that we've built. The blood is representation of the new covenant that we are now in mm -hmm. with him. If you're right. not in that covenant, you're not part of this exactly. relationship. You're not part of this. And yeah. I'm going to read actually 1 Corinthians 10 and 16, 16 and 17. So it says, the cup of blessings, which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread, which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. And the word communion in this in this scripture is representation of fellowship, relationship. Are we yeah. not in relationship? Right. If you're not in that relationship, why are you, yeah, you participating? Stay. Exactly. Like stay this has like Dr. said, it has nothing to do with you. This is about our new covenant, our relationship that we build. Because I am a Christian and I'm following after you and this is what you've done for me and I'm remembering that. Yeah. And that's why I'm taking communion. And this just popped in my head, but it's legit. There's people who are gonna watch this video and they're gonna be like, it ain't that deep. It is. No, it that is. Deep. It is. People are dead. And I think this I think this is a good point for us to read the scripture. Oh, yes. Exactly, because it is that deep. Yes. <laughs> so I'm gonna go to first Corinthians eleven and that's twenty seven through thirty two. So, and it reads back to what we were just saying, why you should take it serious. Um, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthy shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy eateth and drinketh down damnation to himself not discerning the lord's body for this cause many are weak and sickly amongst you and many sleep for if we were judged ourselves we shall not be judged but when we are judged we are chastened of the lord that we should not be condemned with the world so going back to basically why you shouldn't be doing this and why you should definitely take it serious because you you gonna die if yeah. you don't yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no right there. Right there. and when it says a sleep what it's talking about is many are dead yeah. Yeah. they, they were taking naps exactly like they, that's what they was in the dirt you weak you sickly and you're dead yes so there's a <laughs> lot going on here they were weak like she said, sickly, <laughs> ill, and dead. And if you read prior to that, like 1 Corinthians 11, verses 17 through 32, it talks about a lot of the wrong stuff that they were operating in. There was divisions among them. There were factions among them. They were coming and eating up all the food, and the poor wasn't able to participate in the communion. There was just a lot of wrong stuff going on. So there's a right way to take communion and a wrong way to take communion. And that wrong way will result in sickness. It will result in of uh, you being weak and it will result in death. And how much more will people respect the covenant with yeah. God if we treated it as sacred as yeah. it is? Yeah. So when people come to a church to visit and it is time for them to take communion, if we communicated that, that, hey, this is not something to take lightly. Yeah. You do not have to participate simply because you're just here today. Let's do what scripture says. You need to examine yourself. Are you taking this unworthily? What does that mean? That means you are living a lifestyle that is contrary to God. Yeah. You might want to sit this one out, Doc. And my thing is, it's making it as big as it is because, like I said, it's the foundation of our relationship with him. Like, yeah. it's everything. You're remembering his sacrifice. You're remembering everything. And if that's not enough to be taken seriously, there's nothing else that should at this yeah. point. And we being recipients of this relationship, we have to communicate that. We have to say, hey, this is me remembering my relationship, my yeah. foundation of my relationship yeah, with God. Yeah, yeah. So you can't partake in this. Yeah. Even if you are at a, a, a edifice that is not making it as big as it should be, you got to make it personal. This is your relationship. This is a, a landmark. This is a memorial. Your relationship with Christ. And yeah. what he did for me. So yeah. you're not a part of that. I know you're not a part of that. So just sit this one out. 
And even for me, when I'm taking communion, just I'm coming to just the greater appreciation yeah. of what communion means. Because again, I think there's things that we have to grow in mm -hmm. and making sure we fully yeah. understand and appreciate it. Okay, so I'm going to read John chapter 6, verses 48 through 51. Because uh, this is what I am just coming to think of and have on my mind when I am taking communion. He says here, I am the bread of life. That's Christ talking. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. So here... Christ is saying, I am the bread of life and the bread that I shall give is my flesh. So as I am eating that bread, I am thinking about this is his flesh that he gave for me, that he decided to put on flesh because mm -hmm. as, as, as God, he has a spirit in his um, original form, but he became a human being so that he could have blood to bleed and to have a body where he could die so that he could pay that cost for me. And as I take that, I'm appreciating that sacrifice that he made of giving his body as that bread for me. Because you got to remember yeah. that he he was sinless. Like nothing that yeah. he went through, he deserved. Yeah. So as like she said, you grow in appreciation and realize everything that he did in our foundation, we didn't have to. He didn't have to do that. Like, yeah. he did it because he just loves us so much. Yeah. And that's when you realize, okay, yeah. this is a little bit deeper yeah. than what I originally exactly. was just operating in. Because you're like, you understand the backdrop. You understand that he didn't have to put on flesh. He didn't deserve to die, mm -hmm. but he did. So when you're eating that bread and we're saying that it's his flesh, yeah. we're remembering that he gave his life, which is his body, for us. Yeah. He died for you. Like he literally did not have to do that. Exactly. So you grow in appreciation. That's why we say let, let people sit it out. It's okay. Yeah. No, and definitely. And then there's one more scripture to follow up with what Shermiko was saying that is really, really key in John 6 and, 50, uh, 6 and 53. And it says, then Jesus said um, unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. So it all ties back together. This is why we must partake in communion this is why it's so important you you don't have no life in you if you're not doing exactly. if he not in you exactly. essentially yeah. if you're not doing what he has suffered to do for us like there's no way so yeah and i'm gonna just real quick continue um in that same um, vein she was in john 6 and 54 but if I keep reading, you did 53 or 54? It was 53. Okay, so I'm going to read 54 through 58, which says, 54, who, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood mm -hmm. has eternal life. Yep. This is what we're partaking mm -hmm. in, people. Yep. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living father sent me and I live because of the father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers um, ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. And this is where... It is so refreshing when you take, because while we were yet in sin, mm -hmm. Christ died for the ungodly. Mm -hmm. That is what you're remembering as you partake in communion. That to Nina's point, he didn't deserve this, but you did. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. He didn't have to do this, but he did. Yep. If preach. it wasn't for him doing it, you would still be dead in sin. And you would not have access to repentance or remission in yeah. his name. And that is why it is sacred. Mm -hmm. That is why we need to take it more seriously. And that is why we have to teach people. Mm -hmm. So that they can take it more seriously. When it's not just about you getting it, eat a quick wafer and finally getting your first sip of red wine. 
That's not what the purpose right. is. Exactly. It is for you to reflect on what God did for us. But I'm glad you read that scripture because there's this misconception. Come on. Are you, you really talking about me eating, bur- eating flesh and drinking blood? <laughs> Exactly. No, that is not. So again, people are teaching that the wine that's in your glass literally transformed into blood and you're drinking blood. No, 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 no. So first of all, there is no precedent for that. Because as Nina read when we first got started in Matthew 26, that was when the communion was first instituted at the Last Supper. When he had that wine in that cup, it did not transform into actual blood because, first of all, you know you would have had apostles spit stuff out like, what yes. is what this? Is this? <laughs> so, no. if it didn't happen when it was first instituted, it's not happening now. So, that was not the precedent that was set. The precedent is, this is in remembrance of me. It's symbolic of what my blood is doing and what my flesh is doing. And the second point that we know that the wine does not actually transform into literal blood is there's a law against drinking, drinking blood. blood yeah. So if I go to Deuteronomy 12, verse 22 through 23, reads, Just as the gazelle and the deer are eaten, so you may eat them. The unclean and the clean alike may eat them. Only be sure that you do not eat the blood, for the blood is the life. You may not eat the life with the meat. And then if I go to Leviticus 17 and 10, it says, And whatever man of the house of Israel or of the strangers who dwell among you who eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats blood and will cut him off from among his people. So the expectation isn't for us to drink literal blood. And the people didn't understand what he meant when he even That's said that. Because it said many walked away and then followed him. Uh-uh, exactly. 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 But it's representing. Yeah. The bread represents the flesh. So the bread, that wafer doesn't turn into literal flesh that you're eating. You're not being um, like yeah. silence of the lambs. We're yeah. not eating people. And then that blood, that wine is not transforming into actual blood. Both are just representations of the the body and the blood. Mm-hmm. And so. the reason why we will get, those who partake will get eternal life yeah. is because you are partaking in Christ. Yeah. You are partaking to going to the first point Nina made. You are partaking in the gospel that God manifested himself in yes. flesh, that he came to earth, that he shed blood on the cross, that he died and was ro- raised into life on the third day mm-hmm. so that we would have access to repentance and remission of sin in his name. Yeah. That is what you are partaking in. Yeah. And that is why you will have eternal life. Right. And we have to teach that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause if you, that's a great point. That's where I was yeah. going with it because the only way you will have eternal life is because when you, when you do this, you understand it. Yeah. Like the precedence is that, you know, what you're partaking in, that you understand the foundation of your faith, that you understand that this is the gospel and you are walking this thing out. Right. So that's why if you partake in communion, yes, you'll have eternal life because you, you should understand what this is. Now, if you don't know, which with, with everything, you know, edifices and churches do this all the time. They're not teaching and it's sinners mixed with saints. So it's hard to say like, ah, you got it. You don't got for people that are not, operating or understanding this is a foundation of our faith or understand that this is the gospel no they they don't have they part of the ungodly people the unworthy people that are partaking in communion so now you're gonna send them to hell so we gotta make sure that we teaching people and making sure that we divide it up okay if you know what's going on you need to participate if you don't sit this one out yeah and i do want to say for those of us who are living right it is important for us to participate in communion. Yes. Yes. There is no rule on how many times a year you have to do it. It's said as often as you do it. Mm-hmm. So as often as you want to do it or feel led to do it, you should take that communion. Um, I will say make sure you guard yourself against this just becoming a routine or yeah. ritual where it has no value. So that guard against that. But as often as you do it, you need to make sure that you are participating in this 
to show your relationship with Christ, to acknowledge and honor the sacrifice that he made for you and to remember the fact that he is coming back. Yeah, and a lot of people might have the question just in case you're new and you don't know and you have questions about communion. So you can use like what we use. Yeah, I'll give you good. some, just so y'all know, just in case you're like, okay, I need to do it. So if you don't have any um, wine or anything like that, you can use some grape juice, 100% grape juice. Mm -hmm. um, you can also use, they make fun of, the Ezekiel bread. Don't do it. Dry. I'm dumb. Take that. Because I'm telling you. Whatever. You're going to need. It's you going to need. It's the, the, good. the wine, the grape, and a cup of water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that <laughs> thing is dry. Just yeah. make sure you have some water after. Take but the Ezekiel bread you can get yeah. at your local stores, um, like Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, just to give y'all some, or just Google it. And it's just unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. bread. And another yeah. unleavened bread is pita bread. Oh, that is unleavened. Let's do that. That's very good. Bread and grape juice if you don't want to do wine. Because yep. we do understand that some people could be triggered by yep. wine if you are recovering from alcoholism and things like that. Yep. Uh, if that's not your, your your struggle, then you can do wine if you choose. But it is coming from the grape vine. Yep. So that's why it needs to either be grape juice 100% or the wine. So that's why I wanted to make sure we incorporate that so you guys know. Yeah. And you don't have to, you don't need other people to do it. As often yeah, as you remember yeah. God's sacrifice for you, thank you. That's when that's you good. partake. You don't need a pastor like you don't, to administer. You it. just need to be in the right frame of mind. That's the only requirement. As often as you do, as you think of me, do this. Yes. Yep. So I'm, I might need to do it this weekend because. It puts you back in the mind frame of his sacrifice. And that's mm -hmm. what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to mm -hmm. reshift your paradigm to be like, God, you did this for me. And you're reappreciating it. You're, you're re reevaluating where you're at in him. You're looking at your lifestyle like, okay. Because that's what it does. Whenever you look at God, Christ's sacrifice, you always, yeah. 9 times of 10, most people just feel like, dang, I need to you know do better because this is what you did for me. A sense of appreciation and gratefulness overtake you. So as often as you feel that, do it. You don't need other people for that. Exactly. And I would definitely think it's fair to say that when if you can't participate in communion, you should feel some type of way yeah. about yourself. So that, that feeling of conviction that, dang, I'm, I'm not right. And I'm not, I can't take part in this memorial, but I'm also not even honoring the sacrifice because yeah. my life is not in in alignment for me to partake and those are the thoughts the conversations that you need to have with yourself to make sure that my lifestyle is aligning with the word of god so when i do so one that i can partake in communion properly and then my mindset as nina said is in in the right place when i take communion mm -hmm. All right, so we thank you all for watching. We hope that you enjoyed this content. Um, we are so happy that you continue to support Gather Ministries. We ask that you like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all the updates of our latest uploads. In addition, all of our lessons can be accessed on gatherinc.org, all of our written lessons. And we have a bunch of other videos now from um, yes. our Bible yes. studies yes. that are now live on Facebook at yes. 635. You can go look at those. And you can go look at our blogs and our other Gather Talks yes. to get all the information mm -hmm. that God has given to us and that we freely give unto you. So we thank you for taking the time to watch, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.